At the deepest level, how I built this is about who these successful entrepreneurs were when they were lying on the bathroom floor crying about a failure or a crisis, because that's relatable to all of us. Guy Raz. The journey of an entrepreneur is a modern day version of the hero's story. After struggles, fights, and even defeats, the hero rises up, overcomes the obstacles that have previously stopped them, and defeat the bad guy, save the girl, and cement their place in mythology. In the business world, it is late nights, small offices, and multiple rejections, no's, and setbacks. After fighting and clawing for every sale, the floodgates open and the company explodes, and seemingly overnight, the entrepreneur becomes a household name. How I Built This by Gary Raz looks at the struggle before the success, the part of the hero journey that modern day's news outlets like to gloss over because success is more positive and more attractive as a news story. The first key message is that some opportunities are too great to pass up, but look before you leap. Jim Koch was all set in 1984. He had a great job as a management consultant and was on the road to financial freedom for both himself and his children. Really, really good money. The problem was he was unhappy with his current situation. His real interest was European-style craft beer, which was something that had been in his family for a long time. There was a huge hole in the American market for a product of the sort, too. Even though his family was horrified, Jim left his job and founded Boston Beer Company which pulled in $1.3 billion in 2019 and helped drive the craft brewing movement in the United States. The next message is to build your support network carefully and don't be afraid to lean on that network. Humans are social creatures. We work, live, and succeed in groups rather than by ourselves. Startups are simply too big, too complicated, and too challenging to succeed without help. Even people that we think of as individual entrepreneurial success stories, like Jobs, Zuckerberg, and Elon Musk, all had key partners early and often in their companies that helped to fuel the creation of the companies that are now household names. These co-founders and partners should complement your skill sets. Steve Jobs was brilliant and a visionary when it came to home computer products, but sales and relating his ideas to others simply wasn't his strength. Waz, his co-founder, loved this part of the business and brought Jobs' ideas to life with consumers. Jen Rubio, before founding the Away Bag, was a fashion marketing expert with a great idea for a new kind of luggage. She teamed up with a manufacturing and supply chain expert in Steph Corey to help her turn her idea into an actual product. This combination allowed them to present a product that raised $2.5 million of funding before their first major line of suitcases was even launched. It's also your job as an entrepreneur to position your brand creatively. The founder of 5 Hour Energy had a problem. He walked into the convenience store and was bombarded by coolers full of Monster, Rockstar, and numerous other 16 ounce energy drink brands. Thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours could have been spent trying to promote his energy drink without even getting noticed. So he pivoted. He shrunk his energy product to a two ounce shot and had no competition in the market. Not only was this product the only one of its kind on the market, the smaller size allowed it to be displayed next to the cash register. Six months after launch, five hour energy shots were selling 10,000 bottles a week. In the early days, and even after you start getting traction, keep focused on the big picture. There is a phase of the startup where most entrepreneurs quit. You've got a product, You believe in it, you may have even had some small wins. To grow any further, you need investors though, and the small wins that you had aren't going to be enough to fuel the project long term. Microsoft co-founder Paul Graham has defined this as the trough of sorrow. You know how to get out of the trough, you just keep going. If you are building a great product that fills a need, you will be able to sell it to customers. If you do that, the money will come. Just keep going. Next. When your business faces crisis, you must be willing to make a hard decision. Johnson & Johnson's number one product and huge money maker, Tylenol, was hit with a crisis in 1982. Seven people were poisoned with cyanide from tampered bottles of Tylenol. Stock prices of Johnson & Johnson plummeted as sales for Tylenol evaporated. James Burke, CEO at the time, put out a nationwide recall of every single Tylenol capsule 
in all of America. Over 31 million bottles of Tylenol were recalled, and this was even after a pushback from the FDA and FBI. When they did relaunch, they came out with a tamper-proof package as well. All in all, this was a gigantic financial hit for the company, but in just two months stock prices were back and the long-term effects of the crisis were minimal. Burke could have done many things to push blame, to solve the problem in the cheapest way possible, etc. He chose to take bold, decisive action that in the long run minimized the damage done. If all this sounds extremely difficult, it's because it is. But mission-based businesses tend to find success easier. Think of Tom's Shoe Company. They give a pair of shoes away to kids in need for every pair they sell. These are shoes that you can actually feel good about buying. Not to mention that Tom's makes plenty of money as well. Once Tom's became successful, they could have quit this policy, but they've only continued to give. Today, they give away $1 for every three that they make. Not just in shoes, but in grants for mental health, education, and work environment. If your business has a dedicated mission, it can have a huge leg up in an otherwise crowded industry. But make sure that success does not veer the company away from the values and goals that originally helped it find success. Remember, at the deepest level, how I built this is about who these successful entrepreneurs were when they were lying on the bathroom floor crying about a failure or a crisis. Because that's relatable to all of us. Guy Raz has a podcast with the same name as this book, where you can dive even deeper into the lessons of the companies and how they were built. Want to help us build this channel? Hit that thumbs up button to show YouTube that you liked the video, and subscribe so you'll see when we do new book reviews and animations. Also, leave us a comment on a book, article, or concept that you'd like to see us take on, and we will add it to our list. It may even be our next video.